Now, KCAU 9 News starts with your forecast first. Hey, good afternoon, Siouxland. As we're looking out at Sioux Center, Iowa from the Dort University, pretty nice out there. Sunny skies, and you can see the trees are still rippling with those strong breezes from the north. Temperatures have increased a little bit compared to yesterday now in the 60s through the Siouxland area. Some areas to our south even reached up into the low 70s, but overall a cool fall day out there, which we'll be seeing a little bit more of over the next couple days. KCAU 9 News starts right now. We are Siouxland Proud. This is KCAU 9 News at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. And I'm Tim Seaman. The process for approving Iowa's updated congressional and legislative maps continued today. Iowans were given the chance to weigh in on the changes during the second of three virtual meetings. That's right, but a state lawmaker from Siouxland says some of his constituents have a few concerns. And it's our top story now at 6. Those we elect can't praise the process of redistributing Iowa at one moment and at the next moment discard the process because they don't like the result or are seeking another map that gives greater advantages to a particular party or person. Many who spoke at today's meeting expressed similar sentiments, but Sioux Center State Senator Jeff Taylor, who represents District 2, says that some constituents have issues with the size of the 4th Congressional District, despite the population being shared equally. Geographically, the, fee, uh, the feeling that uh, a couple of people have told me is that they just think that the 4th uh, Congressional District uh, would be too large uh, for uh, a representative to effectively represent it. Now, the final public hearing is set for tomorrow. That's at 6 p.m. if you're interested. To view an interactive version of the new redistricting maps, we do have a link provided in this story on our website right now. If you click on it, SiouxlandProud.com or the KCAU 9 mobile news app. Meanwhile, in Nebraska, lawmakers there are nearing the end of their legislative session for redistricting. Speaker of the legislature, Mike Hilgers, is threatening to end the session if an agreement can't be reached by Sunday. It's a move that would likely delay the state's May 2022 primary election. Lawmakers remain at an impasse over how to redraw Nebraska's map to adjust for population losses in rural areas and gains around Omaha and Lincoln. Many things are costing more these days, and now that some cooler weather is here, keeping warm won't come cheap. Natural gas prices used for heating homes and businesses have doubled this year. The increase is being blamed on several factors, such as lower production and storage delays due to tropical storms in the south. Injections, that's the word for what happens before the heating oil season. Natural gas is injected uh, into storage, and those injections are running quite a bit behind schedule. Um, and part of that is because of hurricanes. Part of it is because the oil production is lower, and so natural gas production is lower. And that's shaping up and pushing natural gas prices to their highest level in years. Natural gas prices, again, at their highest since 2008, to be specific. And analysts do predict they will keep climbing throughout the winter months. Siouxland families can apply for the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program that is through the Community Action Agency of Siouxland. That program helps pay a portion of a homeowner's or renter's heating costs. LI HEAP runs from November 1st through April 30th this year. Siouxlanders can begin applying to the program in October. Meteorologist Victor Perez is with me now, and although it was cooler this morning, Victor, we hope we don't need to click the furnace on just yet. Yeah, actually might, because we're going to see temperatures dropping down into the 40s, Tim, so we're expecting a cool evening out in Siouxland. It might be even a taste of some more late fall-like temperatures. Right now, though, the high for the day here in Sioux City was 69 degrees, about 6 degrees cooler than what is normally expected for the third week of September, with the overnight low of 45 degrees, just a few degrees below average. But more importantly, you can see as we look at the forecast lows as we go through the evening, and this will be tomorrow morning, about 6 in the morning. We're seeing some low temperatures down into the upper 30s and low 40s. So we are expecting a cool down, and that's due to the fact that we're seeing clear skies over the next couple of days, Tim, and along with cold air brought in from North Canada, bringing some cool, dry air. Hopefully it's just the next couple of days and then the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're not seeing the weeks. We're just seeing a few days, Tim. So that's good news. Thanks, Victor. Salvi?
All right, thanks, Tim. State Democrats have criticized Iowa's Governor Kim Reynolds for questioning the effectiveness of cloth masks. They also oppose the law that she signed that blocks local school boards from requiring masks in their classrooms. Tom Miller, the state's Democratic Attorney General, has the job of defending a state and federal lawsuit against the governor for that mask mandate ban. Miller says that politics cannot interfere with his job to fulfill his duties as Attorney General. I'm the Attorney General of the state, and I think it's really important that the Attorney General manage and implement the state's litigation, even, even when he or she doesn't agree with the substance of it. Miller added that it would not be appropriate for him to express his personal views about the mask requirement issue since the lawsuits are still going before the court system. And while schools in the state do reconsider requiring students to wear masks, parents are sifting through a barrage of information about them. Some of that information even claims that masks are potentially hazardous to kids. A Des Moines doctor says the worst thing that could happen if a child wears a mask too long is a staph infection. But he says staph infections can happen without masks and are easily treatable, too. To prevent illness, he suggests routinely washing cloth masks and disposing of disposable ones. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, COVID-19 cases in children rose 10% from August to September when school started. Dr. Shaw expects that number to keep going up if children do not mask up while at school. The number has gone significantly higher and the schools which have made mask mandatory, the contact positive rate has been significantly low. So there is a very clear evidence that masks do work. Well, this year's Clay County Fair in Spencer, Iowa, produced record numbers over its 10-day run. Fair administrators say preliminary fairgoer spending on food, beverage, specialty concessions, and carnival rides totaled more than $2.5 million, breaking an all-time record set in 2017. Overall, fair attendance totaled 277,389, with more than 51,000 guests coming through the fair gates on the last Saturday of the fair. Last year's event, of course, was canceled because of virus concerns. And while a traffic light at a busy intersection in Sioux City is nearly online tonight. After a study found the need for a traffic light at the intersection of Sunnybrook and Sargent Road, work is now almost finished on the lights. Though they might look like everything are, is up and running, it will not be operational until sometime in early October. Officials say the lights still need to be programmed before they can be turned on. Individual champions at the 2021 World Archery Championships and World Cup get handed out in Yankton, South Dakota through the end of this month. But the biggest winner just might end up being the community itself, with hundreds of archers from 80 countries attending the competition. Casey Haberham, uh, Haberman, with the National Field Archery Association, says that while Yankton joins a prestigious group of cities who have hosted this event, the benefits go beyond recognition. So having Yankton added to that list is, is a big deal. Um, and then it's an also in, you know, incredibly important economic driver for not only Yankton, but the state of South Dakota and really the region. This year is the second time Yankton has hosted the archery championships. And Yankton is the first American city to host the World Cup of Archery, which will be held two days following the championships which wrap up on the 26th. It is homecoming week in South Sioux City, and the royalty is finding some ways to give back. Members of the South Sioux City homecoming party spent some time with kids in the elementary schools. They ate lunch together, played at recess, and also read to the future Cardinals. Gave high schoolers a chance to relive their younger days, but also gave them a chance to be role models for the next generation. So these kids can see where they're going and what they can plan, and let us talk to them. And just share our experiences with them about school. Friday's homecoming game will be against Omaha Northwest. Good luck.